How y'all doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. And for this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between incomplete dominance and co-dominance. And really why co-dominant or co-dom is often used incorrectly in terms of hognose snakes as well as other species of snakes. So first we're going to start off kind of going over the similarities between these terms and then I'm going to break each one down and give you examples. And then at the end of this video I'm going to show y'all some special looking hognose snakes. So first these are the things or this is the thing that these two terms have in common. So incomplete dominance and co-dominance are both types of inheritance where one allele or form of a gene isn't completely dominant over the other allele. So let's get into incomplete dominance. So incomplete dominance is when there is a blending of the two alleles that results in a third phenotype that doesn't look like the other parents. So to kind of break that down into simpler form, for this example, using flowers, if you have one parent that's a white flower, and another parent that is a red flower, the super form of that or the offspring would be pink or purple what's in this picture. So as you can see, the offspring is a completely different color than the parents. It's neither white nor red. So it's completely different um, in the super form. So that's incomplete dominance. Now in hognose snakes, we have two incomplete dominant genes. The first one is gonna be anaconda which is a reduction in the pattern. So whenever a hognose snake has one copy of the anaconda gene or the heterozygous form, which is one copy, you get a pattern reduction when you compare it to a hognose that's normal or doesn't carry the gene. Now the super form, which is where the hognose carries two copies of the anaconda gene where it gets one copy from the mom, one copy from the dad, you get a complete pattern reduction outside of the head stem. And this is the homozygous form, also called the super anaconda. So when you kind of look at this example right here, we have two parents. They both carry the anaconda gene. The super form of that is going to be the superconda. And so when we go back to the picture of the flowers, as you can see, the superconda does not look like the parents. It does not have the characteristics of either parent because it doesn't have any pattern. That's what makes it incomplete dominant. Now, the other incomplete dominant gene that we know of in hognose snakes is the arctic gene. So you can see on the left is the heterozygous form where the snake has one copy of the arctic gene. When you compare the arctic gene uh, from the normal or a snake that doesn't have the arctic, the arctic lightens the background, kind of gives it a grayish color, and it makes the saddles or the pattern of the snake pop because you'll start seeing some black coloring around the outline of the saddles, especially around the outline of the head stem. Now, when you go to the super form of the Arctic or the super Arctic, the homozygous form, where the snake has two copies of the Arctic gene, one copy from the mom, one copy from the dad, you get a totally different looking snake. Now the background is almost completely white and you have even more of that dark concentration, not only just around those saddles, but in the saddles as well. And then you get a complete, the snake has a completely black eye. And so this is not as good of an example as the anaconda, but as you can see, especially when you look at a super Arctic baby when it's first born, it looks completely different than just an Arctic hog no snake. So now let's go into codominus or codom. This is when both alleles are expressed together in the offspring. So this example using birds, you have one parent that's a blue bird, the other parent is a tan bird. The super form of a co-dominant gene is gonna be a bird that is both white and tan. So it has the, the visual characteristics of both parents. And here's another example using cows as an example. You have one parent that's a white cow, you breed that to a brown cow, and then the offspring or the super form of that would be a brown and white cow. So the offspring, the super form, is gonna have characteristics of both parents. It's not gonna be something completely different looking. All right, so this is an example of co-dominant if it was in hognose snakes. So let's say, we, let's say this is a hognose right here that has a red color, and then you breed that to a hognose that's blue. If, it, if the color was co-dominant, then the offspring would be both 
red and blue. And we do not see that in hognose snakes. If you have a red hognose snake and you breed that to a green hognose snake, you're not going to get any of the babies to be red and green. And so if you bring that back and we look at patterns, let's say you have a, a hog nose with square saddles, you breed that to a hog nose with circular saddles. You do not get a hog nose offspring that has both square and circular patterns. It just doesn't happen like that. So that's why when people use the term codom or codominant to describe anaconda or arctic, they're actually using the wrong term. So let's kind of review this again. So at the top, we have two parents and we're using flowers. We have a red parent and we have a white parent. An incomplete dominant at the bottom left, you have pink offspring. So it's a different, completely different color than both of the parents. And then, but in co-dominance, you would have a red and white flower. So with that being said, like we say, there's no co-dominant genes in hognose snakes that we know of right now. But there are some examples of hognose snakes that kind of have similar characteristics of co-dominance. And so now we're going to bring in a term called chimera. So chimera is a single animal that's composed of cells with more than one distinct genotype. So these animals are produced when two or more fertilized eggs fused together to create a single embryo, as you can see in this picture right here. So you have one animal that basically is like the combination of two. All right, so now you can see in this example with a cat and an axolotl, with the cat you have it halfway is black and then the other half is orange. So you have one embryo that contains genetics for a black cat and then you had a separate embryo that contained the genetics of an orange cat. During the, the growth and development process, those two embryos fuse together. And so you have a cat with like two distinct genetics. And we also have that in hognose snakes. So the first hognose I want to show y'all uh, was produced by Jason Taylor at Beyond Genetics. And so this snake is half super arctic and half super arctic albino. As you can see, it displays characteristics of both of those genes. So this snake um, started out as two separate embryos. One was a super arctic, one was a super arctic albino, and they ended up fusing together inside the mother. And you have a very unique looking snake right here that has carries both of the genetics visually. All right, and next we have probably one of the most interesting looking hognose snakes that I've seen. If you're on Facebook, you've probably already seen this, produced by Russ Tonks at Rustin Hognose. And so this snake right here was actually produced from pairing a frost conda het albino to an arctic albino het frost. For those of y'all don't know, a frost is basically a visual caramel and hypo. So this, this pairing had a lot of genes. You had the hypo, caramel, anaconda, albino, and arctic genes all working together. And as you can see, this snake is literally split in half two different snakes. So this is when it was born, and then on the right is a more updated picture. As you can see, especially from the head, it looks like half of the snake is an albino anaconda, and the other half is a caramel albino anaconda. It may be arctic as well, but as you can see, these are two distinct looking snakes. And you can see right here to where there were two embryos that literally fused together. And then right here, you can see that even the belly scales are different. Uh, one half is translucent and the other half is white. So like I said, this right here is not codominance, but it is similar because you have a snake that displays characteristics of two different snakes. So let's say, you know what I'm saying, let's make believe. What if one parent was an albino anaconda and the other parent was the caramel albino anaconda and then you breed them together and then you get a snake that carries both characteristics like in this one. That, that's kind of how codominance would be. But because that's not the genetics of that is not how it works because this is displaying some recessive genes. It's not codominance. 
But I thought that was a pretty, I thought these were pretty good examples to kind of show you what codominance can kind of look like in hog nose snakes. So that's going to be the conclusion of this video. Hopefully y'all learned something. So the next time you see the Arctic or the anaconda gene being labeled as codominant, you kind of know now that that's actually the wrong term and it is actually incomplete dominant. So if you enjoyed this video and you like the content, feel free to subscribe. You can like the video, leave a comment below. And if you want to follow me on other social media platforms, I have my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff is going to be in the description and I'll see y'all for the next one.